Hey, Shag Hits, Curtis Tucker here, aka Shags, for another exciting episode of A Shaggy Duck Life, following the adventures of an entrepreneur living in Enid, Oklahoma, here in the Midwest, and all of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes of a business, of writing a book, of painting, of doing podcasting, blogging, all that fun stuff. Uh, don't forget, if you're listening on the podcast, I appreciate you guys listening so much. You can also go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV and see a video of this episode. You'll notice in the video episode that I do have a new specs on. These are my new Converse glasses. They are light blue. Wanted to add a little bit of color. They are very reflective right now in the YouTube video, so I apologize for that and uh, ordered anti-reflective coating on the lens and they, uh, the company that sent them in forgot to put the coating on them. So i am got lots of glare on them right now and waiting on the new lenses to come in. But anyway, again, thank you guys. Uh, here to share another exciting story of what goes on in the life of uh, an entrepreneur in the media business, the online business, the content creation business. And so today's episode was sparked by a phone call that I got today about 12 o'clock. I got a phone call from a gentleman that is a storm spotter here in Northwest Oklahoma. So Oklahoma City, well, let, let's talk about the subject real quick. So living in Oklahoma, one of the uh, more unique things that we have in Oklahoma that a lot of people don't have um, is tornadoes. Oklahoma, we usually have the most tornadoes. Now, it does seem like they're shifting a little bit more towards the east, and I know other states do have tornadoes, but Oklahoma um, is famous for having probably the most tornadoes. And so tonight's episode is all about tracking down those tornadoes. Uh, so, to, so what started uh, the thought of today's episode was uh, 12 o'clock, I got a phone call uh, from a gentleman that um, follows storms and he spots the storms for one of the major television stations in Oklahoma City. So if you've ever seen the movie Twister, there are some true facts, kind of, you know, they're not trying to put a machine in the tornado, but they do compete with um, trying to get the best um, video and, and data from tornadoes. And so, so we have three major television stations out of Oklahoma City, and they all three, uh, one of their major competitive points is weather and tornado chasing. So if you live in Oklahoma and there's even the slight possibility of a tornado, all of the regular programming on ABC, NBC, and CBS is interrupted. Uh, sometimes for 8, 10, 12 hours of these weather guys tracking tornadoes all the way across the state. And um, they've gotten so competitive at it that even if there's not a tornado, they'll interrupt uh, just because there's the possibility of a tornado. And so living in Oklahoma, a lot of the key phrases that we've learned over the years are hook echo and um, Gettner and... Um, wall cloud and lowering and uh, mesocyclone, uh, just a lot of tornado and thunderstorm and severe storm um, jargon. And so living in Northwest Oklahoma, uh, we, for some reason, we don't experience as many tornadoes as the middle of Oklahoma does. Right down near the Moore area is probably uh, destination zero for tornadoes in the last, you know, 20, 20 years or so. And so over the years, living in Oklahoma, um, you know, when I was a little kid in the 70s, tracking tornadoes and storms was definitely not as sophisticated. And so, and, and usually the guys on the weather had like chalkboards. I mean, they would have like a chalkboard behind them with a map of Oklahoma already drawn and, and the cities on it. And then he would use chalk and he would kind of tell where the the weather was going, and then if there was the threat of a tornado, they would warn you like an hour ahead and say, you know, hey, there's you know a chance of a tornado. Um, you know, get in the in a in a small room in the center of your house and put a mattress over your head. And so, so as a kid in the 1970s, there were several times that my mom would take me and my sister, and we would go to the bathroom. Usually, it was a bathroom or a closet in the middle of the house, and 
And the thing was, you know, because they couldn't track them as well, you never knew how long to stay there. But um, as a kid, I never saw a tornado. Um, but like I say, there were threats of tornadoes in Oklahoma. Now, you know, lots of severe thorn storms, uh, severe storms in Oklahoma are, are pretty bad. Um, you know, sometimes 60 mile an hour winds or more when that, like when a cold front comes through that, that first wind, it's, it's uh, kind of a, just a sheet of wind comes through and it can do almost as much damage as a tornado. And then you've got the lightning and then we've got hail and, and, um, I've had roofs destroyed um, by hail. I've had you know car damage and had to take my car in to get report uh, repaired from hail. So so severe storms are um, kind of a big thing as well as tornadoes in Oklahoma. And all of this usually happens. Um, usually begins in April. Uh, May is our big month, I I believe, for tornadoes. And then after that, it kind of fizzles. So April May is kind of the big big time for tornadoes. And so um, so today at 12 o'clock, uh, the guy that chases, and I, I say chases, let me say spots um, storms and tornadoes for one of the news stations in Oklahoma City called and wanted to know if I wanted to go um, out with him because today there was a slight chance of a tornado outbreak. And what happens is these cold fronts and warm fronts meet and then there's a cap that kind of keeps everything contained, but if that if that cap breaks open, that air rushes up, and the and these huge clouds, you can just watch them form, and they shoot up into the sky, and then once those start forming, that's when the wind starts to circulate, and then as it as it's circulating, as these storms are building, it kind of turns sideways, and then that turns into a tornado, and then those tornadoes form what we call a wall cloud, and that wall cloud comes down, and then a tornado usually drops out. And And you can usually, on radar nowadays, you can kind of tell where these wall clouds are going to form in what we call these hooks, and they're usually on the south side of a storm. You, you, after after watching it a lot, um, you kind of you kind of can figure out where tornadoes uh, are, are going to form. And the weather guys in Oklahoma have gotten to be pretty good, and radar has gotten really good. So they can tell you exactly what block a tornado is at. So if a tornado drops on the ground in Oklahoma, the weathermen in Oklahoma City will tell you what neighborhood the tornado is in and what housing additions need to get prepared for the tornado. And so in Oklahoma, when there's a threat of a F4 uh, or F5, which we don't really have that often, but but large tornadoes, they will tell you that, um, you know, you have to get, um, they want, if, if they're going to be really big, they just want you to get out of the area because there's some tornadoes that have come through Oklahoma that literally wipe everything off the face of the earth that's in its way. There's just nothing left. Now, if you have an underground shelter, um, you could survive uh, if you're completely underground, but uh, they would rather you, you know, just get out of the way. So anyway, um, hopefully I'm explaining all that right. But so today there was a slight chance um, of tornadoes. Uh, the uh, guy asked me if I want to go. Unfortunately, he was leaving in an hour, you know, after he called me and I just didn't have time. I've got the dog here and had some stuff to do. So I did not get to go, but that got me thinking about the times that I have gone. So back in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, I would do some torn. Now, in those days, I was storm chasing. So in Oklahoma, there are a lot of people that come to Oklahoma and chase storms. And, and basically what we're doing is we're just trying to see the storm, see the tornado, take pictures, take video, uh, things like that. So we're the people that, or back in those days, I was the people that was in the way. Um, and so the storm spotters are the people that are kind of like official. They have vehicles that are really marked and they usually speed along and, and they know where to be because the they've got all these gadgets in their vehicles that show them the radar. The guy that's in the studio in Oklahoma City tells them, you know, where to be. And, and they position these guys all over the state and they know, you know, basically where the tornadoes are going to form these days and then where they're going to go. And so, um, you know, before I became involved in some of that stuff, I would just chase on my own. 
Um, just really fascinated with weather and tornadoes, you know, I guess having grown up in Oklahoma, I probably would have been very happy to have become a meteorologist, not really the guy that's on the television, but the guy that's, you know, um, analyzing the data and trying to forecast where the storm's going to be. I, I think I would have wanted to be that guy, the guy behind the scenes or the guy in the vehicle that's actually... Um, you know, going after the storms. And so, so through the years, um, it wasn't until college that I, I kind of saw my first tornado. Um, it was, oh gosh, it was, uh, I actually in the nineties, probably late nineties, early two thousands. Um, I was dating my wife at the time and there was a report that there was going to be, uh, could be a tornado in the Oklahoma city area. So, uh, we hopped in the car and I drove to the location where um, I knew that the tornado, tornado could be forming. And so we saw the wall cloud and we saw the, the, the cloud, you know, come out of the sky and it kind of dipped down. Uh, and I don't want to say unfortunately in a good way, but unfortunately it was a tornado where there just wasn't a lot of debris and a lot of moisture in the air so you couldn't act there was a tornado but you couldn't actually see it it wasn't like one of those really really dark uh, defined funnels but but we saw it come down and you could see things on the ground flying around so and then you could see power lines popping and 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 breaking and so we kind of knew where the tornado was and I was able to follow it through Oklahoma City and it got to an area that we call um, Lake Hefner and it crossed Lake Hefner and you could see the area on the water where the tornado was spinning. Even though you couldn't really see the tornado, you could see the, the water um, getting spun around. So you knew it was, and, and it was kind of weird because we were up on a bridge uh, behind the tornado and, and I believe you could see the highway patrol stop traffic on Lake Hefner because they knew it was going to be crossing the Lake Hefner Road and the tornado, tornado uh, crossed Lake Hefner Road, went uh, into a really populated area. It hit a place called, um, uh, it was on May, golly, now I'm not going to remember. Um, it was kind of a bar restaurant, really famous in Oklahoma City, but it hit it, uh, did some damage there. Why can't I think of that? Um, it may come to me here in a little while. So that was, uh, so, so I've kind of seen some tornadoes like that. I've been in areas right after a tornado hit. Um, sometimes not knowing exactly where to the tornadoes are, you get caught up in the storm and then there's so much rain and hail and wind that you can't see the tornado. And so tornadoes, you know, can go by you and you just don't see them. Um, sometimes they, they happen at night and if there's not a lot of lightning, you can't see them. And so, so my next uh, major tornado, uh, it was May 3rd, 1999, um, living in Edmond at the time. I don't, yeah, me and my wife were married. We were living down in Oklahoma City. I was still working in Enid, but I was commuting back and forth. But a storm fired up uh, down maybe by Wichita Falls, and, and they knew that it was going to kind of fire up and it was going to cross Oklahoma, and then it was going to be heading up to the Oklahoma City area. And so that's exactly what happened, and we, I just, being interested, started watching the uh, weather report, and tornadoes started breaking out, and like some big, major tornadoes, and they just kind of, and tornadoes usually in Oklahoma, they usually go from the southwest corner of the state, and then they cross, and they go northeast. So most tornadoes travel northeast in Oklahoma. Not all of them, but uh, a lot of them will, will kind of go that way. Usually they, they go east. Um, and so this storm was coming up and it was heading towards the Oklahoma City area, which is made up of Moore and Norman and Oklahoma City, Midwest City, Dell City, uh, Edmond, or they're all kind of kind of squished in there, Yukon. Uh, and so, so it, but this went on for like hours. It just the and the, and again, when these things break out, the news coverage is twenty. It's just they just never stop. They don't even break for commercials. It's just, it's nonstop coverage. They have guys 
um, storm spotters that are around the tornadoes. They have live cameras. They have helicopters. Usually there's three helicopters um, following the tornado. So you know exactly where the tornadoes are. You know where the storms are. You see it on TV. You're kind of following it. And there was one tornado, uh, and it was May 3rd, 1999, that was big, and it just kept going and going and going. And then it kind of entered, it was about to enter the Moore area, and I told my wife, I said, we're going to go see it. And so we hop, and so by then, there had been so much warning that it was kind of eerie. You get out on the roads, even up in the Edmond area, there was just not a whole lot of people on the roads. The roads were really clear. And so I was had a Honda Prelude at the time. And so we hopped into the Honda Prelude and uh, I started driving to the area where I knew the tornado was going to be. Now this was prior to having a lot of, a I don't even know if we had an iPhones at that point. Um, so it was kind of hard to, you know, I, I had to go off memory of where I thought it was going to be. It wasn't like we had something in the vehicle telling us where it was. And so we were flying down the highway, and again, there was very little traffic, and there were some bridges that we would go under, and there were actually sheriffs and highway patrol that were parked under these bridges because they knew that the storm was coming, there could be hail. Now, it's not a, those aren't areas that you want to get out of your car and hide under, but they, you know, I think because of the hail, um, they were sitting under there. So anyway, we, um, in, in the meantime, as we were trying to drive to meet the tornado, the, the May 3rd tornado, it hit more and was moving up to uh, the Dell City area. Well, as it got to the, we got to the Dell City area the same time the tornado did, but by that time it had started to get a little bit dark, so it was kind of hard to see, and plus I was driving and so there's buildings and trees in the way, and it, you know, the, the neat thing about some tornadoes in Oklahoma is you can spot them out in the field. So Oklahoma is made up of just field after field after field and flat, really flat land, and so when, when the storms and the tornadoes are out, away from a city, they're really easy to spot. You can, you know, be, you know, a mile, half a mile away and you can film them and you can get out of your car and just stand there and, and see them, you know, kind of go right past you and it's no big deal. Now, when when you're in a city, you're dealing with, you know, roads and, and buildings and trees and you can't always see it. So we, we actually did not physically see the May 3rd tornado, but um, as we got into Dell City, it, that was where it finally lifted off the ground for a little while. Now, after Dell City, it came back down, but it it, it wiped out several neighborhoods um, in Dell City. And as we went into town, there was power lines, power poles. You know, it had it had cracked, it had uh, cut off the power poles, and so they were leaning over the street. And and the lines were. The thing is, having a Honda Prelude, I was able to drive under the power poles and, and drive around. And so there was, there's an area in, um, I think by that time, I, th I think it's Midwest City. So, so it had gotten to Midwest City. So we were at a um, Rose State College, which is a, a, a small community college there in Midwest City. And that's where the tornado had just gone over. And so by the time we were driving by the college, there was debris falling out of the sky. I mean, just tons, like confetti, just coming out of the sky. And there was trees down and there was um, huge cement benches that were thrown, you know, and, and the streets were flooded. And again, the power poles were snapped. And, and, and again, it, it started to get a little bit dark, so it was hard to see. And then, you know, the tornado was gone. Well, then we got trapped um, in Midwest City because they shut everything down. There was emergency vehicles. I mean, in Dell City, um, and I believe part of Midwest City, it had, it had wiped out entire neighborhoods. Like, like when you drove by there, there, just, there was just concrete slabs. There was no trees. There were no houses. There were no garages. There were no signs. You know, it was just wiped clean. It was just flat, and so we had to we had to drive actually east um, to a town called um, I believe we had to drive out to Choctaw to get around Midwest City to get out of there. Um, so so that was that was the biggest tornado that um, I experienced. I didn't actually see it, 
but experienced. And then over the next, you know, uh, 10, 20 years, um, there was a lot of of chasing. Mostly it was just storms and things like that. And then I, I started to get more into photography. So um, started to doing a lot of storm photography where I'd go out and take pictures of cloud formations. And uh, even though there's not a tornado in Oklahoma, there are some really wicked looking storm formations and cloud formations and, and lightning. And, um, and so, like I said, living in Oklahoma, you can you can be, you know, if you're, you know, five miles out of it, out of town, there's usually not another town within, you know, several, you know, tons of miles. And so there's a lot of farmland and it's all flat. And so if you know where a storm is, you can drive out of town and position yourself to watch the storm go by. And so um, I would do that a lot. I would go out and set up and, and take a lot of pictures and have gotten a lot of great cloud uh, pictures and things like that. But uh, in May of 2017, I got that was the first time I got a phone call from this guy that had given me a call today, and he asked, uh, and it was one of those days. So every now and then, there are days that that you, you, there's got to be moi- there's got to be heat, there's got to be cooling, there's got to be moisture, there's got to be a, a cap that that breaks, there's got to be all these ingredients. It's, it, now this is where it's a little bit more like Twister. There, there's got to be these ingredients, and if those ingredients all happen at the at the time that they're supposed to, there's always a hundred percent chance of tornadoes, and usually big tornadoes. And so this was one of those days. This was one of those days where they pretty much knew there was going to be tornadoes. I it had to be at least a week or two weeks ahead. I mean, they, you know, two weeks out they kind of know, but then a week out they're like, okay, we're pretty sure there's going to be tornadoes in this area. And then a few, you know, several days out, they're like, yeah, hundred percent. So it was one of those days where there was almost no chance that there was not going to be a tornado. And, and what happens then is there are actually people that chase tornadoes like people chase uh, solar eclipses. And while, so I'll get to this, but while we were chasing the tornado or the storm, um, there was a busload of people and these people pay money and they're storm chasing companies that you pay them, you show up at a location, they provide the bus and, and the know-how and they pile everybody in a bus and they follow the tornadoes and they try to give you the thrill of seeing a live tornado. And so it was so well known that the tornadoes were going to happen that day, um, and let me look here real quick, that... Um, that there were those tours, those tornado tours were going on. We saw the buses. It was May 18th. It was a Thursday, 2017. And so, so I got the phone call. Uh, the guy said, um, you know, do you want to go ride? And I said, yeah, because I'd been hearing it on the news that there was going to be tornadoes. And so I loaded up my camera, video stuff and everything and hopped in the truck with him. And so off we went and it wasn't, but, you know, and not even an hour and and the clouds were just popping up and again so the cool thing about being in Oklahoma is you can see these things form and it's so weird there can be literally blue sky and within five minutes there might be a little white puffy cloud and then within 15 minutes that white puffy cloud expands and then all of a sudden it starts bubbling up and then like within 20 minutes it's just this huge cotton ball looking thing that that's way way up in the air and and when that starts happening that's where the thunderstorms start forming and so those things started popping up all around us where we we were in um, northwest Oklahoma at the time we'd we'd gotten away from Enid but we were in northwest Oklahoma well the storm started popping popping up in the southern part of the state and so um, when you're a storm spotter, and I'm going to say spotter rather than chaser because we spot the, the storms and the tornadoes for the meteorologists so they'll know where they are. We're not chasing to get footage. We're cha- Well, in a way we are, but we're also chasing, we're mainly chasing to be able to tell a meteorologist on TV exactly where the tornadoes are and what they look like and if there's damage and, and so they can report it to the public. And so that's what these guys, that's what their job is. 
And so we zip, we were uh, heading down to the southern part of Oklahoma. So they, they drive hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles um, because what you do is you, you can, you drive hundreds of miles down to where the tornado is and then you, you basically have to track it for hundreds of miles until it fizzles out or it goes into somebody else's um, jurisdiction or area or whatever. And so we zipped down there. There was these huge clouds that were popping up um, everywhere. So I, I knew something was going on, was going to happen. And so um, we got to one area and it was kind of what was really kind of cool about it. It was an area. So one of the things that have taken over Oklahoma is these wind turbines. So almost everywhere you drive in Oklahoma now, like in the old days that you'd see in California, well, now the landscape of Oklahoma, when I was a kid, especially in the 70s, there was oil wells everywhere. And there was these oil well, these pumpers um, everywhere. I mean, if you drive down, the, drive down the highway, they were just hundreds of them you could see. Now you rarely see any of those, uh, the oil wells and the pumping stations and all that. And now what you see is hundreds and hundreds of wind turbines, these huge, huge wind turbines. And so, so on this, uh, on this date, uh, one of the first tornadoes that we saw that day um, dropped down from the clouds into an area where those wind turbines were. So I've got some f uh, photographs of the, the tornado going through one of those wind turbine fields. And so it was just one of those days where we saw several, now these weren't like huge tornadoes. It wasn't like a, a big tornado with a half mile or mile an hour base. These were more of the tornadoes that, that look like a cone. And, and down at the bottom, it's just really, really small, but they still, you know, whatever they hit, they, they destroy and they tear up. And so what we would do, and so the, the, the weird part is when you're, when you're trying to spot these storms is the literally, I'm gonna, there's, there had to be in hundreds of cars that were following these storms. And, and again, 99% of them were just people out to, to try to get pictures and for the thrill of it, but they kind of clog up the roads. And so for the people that are out trying to spot the tornadoes, it, it can be kind of a mess. And, and then in one spot where we pulled over, um, the tornado had dropped and was going and you know, uh, again, when you're in kind of a clear area and you can see the tornado and you know which direction it's going, there's really no fear because you just hop out of your car and you film and you know, you know, where the tornado is going to go. Now, every now and then, you know, tornadoes do change directions. It is dangerous, but, um, you, it, you know, it, that day we just, we kind of knew where they, what they were doing. And so we hopped out of the car and the tornado dropped down and it was going across some grassy area. And that's when I saw the bus. Um, full of, it was like a tornado tour bus and it stopped and all these uh, tourists jumped out and started taking pictures. It was probably one of the craziest things that I'd ever seen, but there was a mile, at least a mile of cars that had all pulled over and everybody was taking video and pictures. And again, this was in 2017. And so even, so the movie Twister, uh, you know, helped cause a lot of this craze and, and, and other stuff. And so, um, so anyway, that day was probably the day that I, I got the best footage ever of um, tornadoes. And I've got video and I've got uh, pictures. And again, not, hu not a huge tornado, but you know, big enough uh, to see in the pictures. And, and it, so if you go to curtistucker.com, one of the links at the top of the page says adventures. And so on that tab, on the adventures, that's where like uh, I chased the solar eclipse and and tornadoes and interviewed Garth Brooks and flew in with the Thunderbirds. So those type of adventures that I go on, that's where you'll find those stories. And so that that blog post has been up for a while. But again, the phone call today is what kind of reminded me of that. And I thought, you know, uh, we're we're just entering the thick of tornado season right here in Oklahoma. And so I thought I would kind of talk about um, of that. So what I may end up doing uh, as we get more towards the end of April and into May is um, maybe go out and try to follow a storm or the possibility of a tornado, which I think next week, or I think this Saturday, there's a, a good chance of tornadoes in Oklahoma. So, you know, so today is 
Thursday. Now it's only a few days out, but they, they are predicting a fairly good chance of possible tornadoes this Saturday. Unfortunately, I will be in Norman watching the OU spring game unless it gets canceled due to weather. And so I won't really be in a position to um, chase the storms, but uh, hopefully this season I'll be able to either go with the guy that, that officially chases them or I'll go on my own and I'll maybe record and maybe do some video. Um, now that would be cool is to, you know, video while I'm podcasting and then put all that together and it could be a, a podcast with uh, live footage. And it wouldn't be live, but while I'm podcasting, it would be live, live footage of what happens um, as you're following a storm. So, and and I don't think I have it on curtistucker.com, but I will track it down. I think it's on enidbuzz.com somewhere. Um, one day I was out on the Enid Trail, and if you guys have listened at all, I, I go out on the trail every morning, and, and it goes kind of a little bit to the outskirts of Enid into an area that's wheat fields, and it's flat, and you get away from the trees and the buildings, and so that's where I get a lot of my sunrise uh, photographs because you can see the sun coming up every morning and so I get great sunrise photographs but out there one day and that was only maybe three you know a couple of years ago I saw one of those clouds form and so what I did was while I was walking back and forth on the trail is I took you know pictures and kind of a timeline of, of that cloud formation forming and had the conditions been right, that cloud would have turned into a really big thunderstorm with the possibility of a tornado. Um, the conditions, there was, was not enough moisture in the area that day to help it you know, get to that point. And, and so what you find out is these, these storms and these clouds form really quick and they explode and they blow up. And then if there's what we call a cap, then you'll see the cloud flatten at the top and, and then it, it just it quits building and then it kind of fizzles out. And then sometimes they go away almost quicker than they show up. And so I've got a series of photographs of one of those clouds exploding into what would have been one of those storms. Um, and I'll try to track that down, those photos down and put those uh, series of photos on curtistucker.com. But you can go to curtistucker.com, again, click on adventures and uh, you'll find, let me see, I've got, um, there's a, a picture with the blog post um, with the tornado by the uh, wind turbines and then just a whole bunch of different photographs. And there was several, several tornadoes. And I've got some pictures of being in the chase vehicle, um, a picture of a lot of the people pulled over on the highway. And then there, I actually even took some video and so, you'll be able to see the video of, of the tornado. So that is just uh, another one of the adventures of living here in Oklahoma and being kind of in the media. Um, I'm not an official weather meteorologist or anything, but um, I do like to try to keep the people in Enid, Oklahoma updated on what's going on with the weather. And so a lot of times I will run out and uh, kind of track some of the storms if they're close, take some pictures of the clouds. Um, uh, I'm also a rainbow chaser. And I don't know if that could become a full time or full episode, but um, being at this as long as I have, you kind of, you, 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 you start to learn about weather and weather patterns and, and what happens. And so I'm pretty, I'm a pretty good predictor of when a rainbow is going to appear and where it's going to appear. And so I do uh, a lot of rainbow chasing. And so I've got a lot of rainbow pictures, a lot of rainbow photography. Uh, I'll have to get all of those together and do at least a blog post of all my rainbow pictures here in Oklahoma. And that might be kind of fun. I don't know if that would be a, a long enough episode on its own. But uh, living in Oklahoma, a lot of crazy weather. Uh, you, if you live here, you know, people in Florida, on the coast, Florida and California, they kind of have a, a steady, more steady weather, especially in California. You know, it's like in the 60s and 70s all the time year round. In Oklahoma, um, it's, it's the extremes everywhere. So in the winter, you know, we can get below zero temperature wise. We get ice storms and, and um, blizzards and snow and cold and wind. In the fall, we get we, we can have tornadoes in the fall, 
but we get storms and, and cold and hot and uh, in the spring we get the tornadoes and the, th the thunderstorms and flooding and in the summer we get uh, the extreme heat you know 107 uh, drought uh, things like that and so living in Oklahoma the one thing that if I ever moved away from Oklahoma uh, and people that have moved away from Oklahoma one of the things that they miss are the thunderstorms and the lightning and the the rain and the uh, so my buddy Todd's son has moved to California and he said one of the things that he misses is hearing the thunderstorms and that's one of the cool and that is one of the coolest things about living in Oklahoma is uh, sometimes these storms are so big and and, and it's just like a, it's what we call a front and when the front goes by if that front is lined up with your town and as it's going northeast the whole front just continues to go over your town. It can lightning and thunder for hours, you know. It can just keep storming and storming and storming. And, it, you know, it's not like severe the whole time, but there'll be like, you know, maybe 30 minutes of, of sprinkles, and then there'll be a thunder and lightning and maybe a little bit of hail, and that'll last for 15 minutes, and then there might be another 20 minutes of, and it just goes back and forth. But... The, one of the really cool things is when a storm comes by just as you're going to bed. And so uh, it's always, as weird as it sounds, it's sometimes very comforting going to sleep with a thunderstorm happening. Uh, that's another thing. I've got a lot of lightning photography and videos. Um, sometimes we have storms that are just a few miles outside of Enid, and at night you can just see the sky lighting up, and you can see the you can see these... The clouds that I'm talking about, they're, you know, again, miles and miles and miles away, but you can see the lightning um, just constant, just, it's like fingers just constantly going. And, um, you know, if you fire up a video camera, of a, uh, uh, just a regular camera, you can get some really great lightning footage um, of those storms that are off in a distance. So I've got that. Maybe I'll add that. Um, to a page as well, but again, when you get getting back to the thunder, it's kind of cool uh, to hear that thunder, and uh, and then there are times when severe thunderstorms end up right over your neighborhood, and we've had um, cracks of lightning so loud that they it's it's literally like an earthquake. It shakes the whole house and wakes you from a dead sleep, and probably about three years ago, uh, living over in the woodlands, uh, I was working in my office. Now my office, so our house in the woodlands, we had a garage and I would keep the garage door open. And then I had an office attached to the garage and I would leave my office door open. So basically I was sitting and, you know, I could look right out into the driveway. And so there were, you know, it was just open. And so one night there was a storm that fired up and uh, of course I left everything open because it's kind of neat to sometimes a cool breeze will come in as that storm goes by um, you know it could be 90 degrees out and then as a storm goes by you'll feel that cool breeze and then it goes away but anyway so I had the door open and there was a, a thunderstorm going by and you could hear the thunder and it kind of rolls and and rolls and and I think earlier probably I don't know, 30 minutes before um, this happened, I think I had been out looking. It was, a li it was really hard to look at storms in the woodlands because it had a lot of woods and a lot of trees, and so you couldn't really see a lot of the lightning and, and stuff. But I went out to kind of see if I could see what was going on and didn't really see anything because of the trees, and I went back into my office, and then there was the loudest crack. I, I believe that was probably the loudest lightning strike I've ever heard. And so when lightning strikes near you, it's very loud. And I mean, very loud, like, like, you know, like a gunshot going off and it's immediate because it's right there by you. And so I, I heard the lightning and saw a flash and found out the, I, I'm not sure. I can't remember if I found out that night or found, I may, I, maybe I did that night. Um, but so um, Woodlands was a circle uh, in the woods and we lived on the entrance side of the circle and there was a house directly north of us on the back side of the circle and they had a huge tree. So uh, lightning hits a lot of trees in Oklahoma 
And so he had a really, really large tree in his front yard, and that lightning struck his tree. And then when, when lightning strikes something, it, well, actually, um, energy builds up. Usually, sometimes energy builds up in the ground, and, and a lot of times lightning, even though people think sometimes lightning comes out of the sky, a lot of times lightning actually comes from the ground and goes up into the sky. Uh, now, th there's different kinds of lightning, but anyway, this lightning struck this tree and it went down in the roots. And then once it went down in the roots, it spread out uh, through the ground. And then it, as it's going through the ground, it grabs hold of anything metal that it can and it follows that. And so it hit his tree, splitting the tree, huge branches came off of the tree. The lightning went through the ground, hit um, a pipe, could have been a, a, I don't know, water pipe, could have been a, a electric pipe, I, whatever, but went into his house and blew his um, a uh, outlet out of his wall. It blew it out of the wall and fried all of the electrical things in that room and I believe fried his um, fuse box in his garage. Well, it also somehow went through the ground and knocked out one of my outside outlets because after that my uh, my sprinkler system was plugged into the outlet and after that lightning strike it quit working and so that outlet quit working. Um, so uh, I believe probably everywhere in the United States if not Oklahoma I believe lightning kills more people than tornadoes do so you got to be really leery of, of lightning and we do get a lot of lightning in Oklahoma I know that uh, Oklahoma is kind of a big golfing state so we have a lot of golf course especially because it's flat and we have a lot of area and so a lot of people are struck by lightning out playing golf so you are warned um, to get off of the golf course during a thunderstorm uh, sports if they're I believe in Oklahoma the rule is if there's lightning within five miles you have to stop whatever you're doing for an hour I think it's something like that so like if you're if there's a football game a baseball game a soccer game going on and there's lightning spotted I believe it's five miles I I could be getting all this wrong but I'm just kind of letting you guys know that if there's lightning in the area they do cancel or postpone whatever sporting event is going on for a certain period of time and then if lightning does not strike again they can continue with the sport um, but uh, have seen a lot of lightning in Oklahoma I've seen a lot of trees uh, completely destroyed by lightning I've seen houses um, struck by lightning caught on fire um, you know major parts of the house have burned down because of lightning has struck their their roofs um, just uh, kind of a kind of a crazy crazy weather things uh, um, I think Todd and I have talked we've talked about this on the 70s buzz podcast in 1973 while living in Enid we had one of the worst known floods uh, in the country, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but the amount of rain we got in a short period of time is on record as, as one of the top amounts of rain in a short period of time ever. And so Enid, Oklahoma in 19, uh, October of uh, 1973 flooded, and uh, people did die. Uh, lots of property was destroyed. Uh, cars were floating down the creeks and um, and I remember that night, uh, I might as well just add it on to here. So that night, uh, 1973, so I'd have been, what, 11, probably 11 years old. I was living in a rent house. My mom had, it was our second rent house after moving back to Enid. And it was, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, probably five or six blocks from where I am right now, down, down the street. And the house across the street, my great grandma owned. And then eventually my mom bought the house next door to that. So, but the house directly across the street where my great grandma lived, that's the house I own now. But we were renting the house across the street. So my mom, it was a, whatever night it was, it, it was probably a Wednesday night. My mom was bowling because me and my sister were home by ourselves and it started raining and then it just kept raining and it kept raining. And, and it wasn't like a, a, you know, just a regular rain. It was a torrential rain and it just rained and rained and rained and so um, 
eventually it, it went on for so long. I believe my mom somehow called my great grandma and told her she couldn't make it home. So the flooding was so bad, my mom couldn't get from the bowling alley to our house. And she was trying to drive around the city to come in a different way to get home because the streets were flooded. And so my great grandma called us and said that we needed to cross the street and come to her house. And so I remember crossing the street and in Oklahoma, you know, most of the streets we have, a, I don't know, a eight, 10 um, inch curbs. Um, the street between our houses was flooded. I mean, it was probably almost up, and this was a really flat area. This was not an area near a creek or anything. Um, it just, it flooded every spot in town. Um, so even the flat areas were, were flooded. And so I remember my, you know, sneakers and feet uh, being wet because it was almost, it was up to my ankle. So anyway, we ran across the street to my great grandma's house and she had uh, a lot of times people in Oklahoma have basements. And one of the reasons we have basements is to hide from the tornadoes. But um, she had some windows, you know, in the basement and the water was, was so high that it was it was going over the the ledge of the window into the basement. So she had us go down to the basement and get pails of water and run them upstairs and throw them out, which funny, you know, the water literally would just go out the back porch where we threw it and then down the driveway and then back, you know, into the basement. Uh, so we weren't really doing any good, but uh, we thought we were. So, um, so we stayed and it's, I don't remember everything. My mom, um, eventually she saved a guy whose car had gotten, who, who was underwater and she gave him a ride. I think she eventually made it home. But, uh, so that was one of the, if I think that was probably the worst flood in Oklahoma. Um, it made, um, news all over, but, uh, major flood. Uh, so we do get to major flood since that flood in 1973, Oklahoma has built, um, kind of a, a drainage system to try to help so it never happens again. And it was probably one of those once in a 100 year floods. Um, and so, but you know, we've had floods since then, but not anything quite as bad as that one. So just some of the crazy weather living here in Oklahoma. Um, would love to hear what uh, you guys put up with in either your country or your state. I know that, uh, you know, and, and uh, I won't get really into this, but um, probably, what, two, three years ago, Oklahoma had the most earthquakes of any state in the nation. And we don't have big earthquakes like um, California earthquakes, but we have earthquakes sometimes big enough that you feel and you hear your house rattle and boom. And, and me being usually in chairs that kind of rock, I've, I've been in earthquakes in Oklahoma where my ch chair has actually rocked and I felt a little woozy. And so just, a, uh, so let me know if you, if you live in a, um, you know, an area that floods or gets no weather or has earthquakes or uh, hurricanes. Now that, that is one thing that we can say we don't get um, here in Oklahoma. We do get the remnants of some hurricanes that come up uh, through the Gulf, but uh, we don't really get hurricanes here, but just about everything else we get here in Oklahoma. So I will continue to uh, monitor the tornado situation and try to get out and do part of a podcast um, while maybe following a storm. And uh, I'll try to get all those pictures on. So don't forget to go to curtistucker.com. That's my blog. There's a lot more um, blog posts and photography and videos there. The podcast with me on the video is at youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker. I've also started that Patreon. It's patreon.com slash shags, S-H-A-G-G-S. And if you guys want to contribute $5 a month there for a couple of months, I will send you a pack of stickers. Um, here's the Shaggy Duck sticker. I've got a shag sticker and, and some other stuff. You'll get some other cool stuff. So uh, going to try to keep these podcast uh, advertising free. Uh, we don't actually do the podcast. Uh, you know, our whole point wasn't to make money. It would be cool to start making money so we could do more and, and, uh, 
and you know come up with more better stories. But uh, don't forget, uh, this is, I want this to be kind of a behind the scenes, but also made up of a lot of stories of what's going on behind the scenes. And so please let me know uh, your stories. I would love to share some of those. I'd love to have some regular characters on this podcast that listen in. Please hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com. And uh, you guys can send me an email there or you can uh, message me on all the bazillion um, different uh, social media platforms I'm on. But I, again, appreciate you guys so much listening in. I would love to hear from anybody that's uh, living outside of the United States. If you're checking in, this is one of those kind of a personal journal podcast. And I think that's the direction I'm going to go, just kind of telling stories. So I need to get out there and uh, come up with some uh, different stories. But you guys have a great evening. I'm going to bolt out of here and uh, get this uploaded. So we will talk to you guys soon. See ya.